The focus of our talk today is going to be focal area and the idea of having an area of your painting where you want the viewer's eyes to rest, where you want the uh, viewer's eyes to be most excited and be most intrigued by. Now, the focal area is pretty much, let me show you, it's going to usually be and most successfully has been found to be if you take and if you were to split your work of art into the equal different sections your focal area will always cross both of these lines and it can be in multiple areas but this is the general area of one focal area that's very popular and then you could do another one as long as it crosses both lines it would go over here do circles in that one and it would actually overlap there and those are the two main ones and then there's the two that would be at the bottom that would do that same thing just you know at the bottom of the page so you have four main sections for your focal area. It may be a little bit of a visually confusing, but you can get the general idea that your focal area should be kind of right in that middle to the right, middle to the left, middle to the bottom right, middle to the bottom left. Um, it should take up 25% of your, your actual work. The rest of the area should be a little bit more subtle, less things should be happening, and the attention of the viewer shouldn't be as intrigued by that area. What are different ways that we can include or make this happen? Now, there's a couple different really important things. Number one, uh, have the lightest area of your painting next to the darkest area of your painting right next to each other. This will naturally make things pop and make things very, um, that contrast will draw that eye into it. Uh, the most irregular shapes being in that focal area will intrigue the viewer's eye to be there. The most intense colors, and the hardest edges, the most detailed textures, uh, diagonal lines, and a human figure or something that's living that implies movement. That natural view of a human seeing another human especially in a work of art, is going to draw your eye in. You'll be like, oh, I recognize that as a human, and I kind of want to know more about it. Just like if you see someone on the street way down there, you probably are looking at them, checking, like, what's going on over there? Who is that person? Um, as a human, we just want to see other humans and are intrigued by what they're doing. Um, think about considering that in your work. I did a huge series um, this last year on animals. And the idea was that you have an animal, so that intrigues the eye, and then you have this abstract work behind it that intrigues kind of this imagination. Um, making that background out of focus and kind of blurring it a little bit when you're doing your painting outside of the focal area will actually bring your attention to the focal area. Uh, the, f the focal point should be that one point that's the brightest of brights and darkest of darks right next to each other. And you can have a couple different focal points, but try to include them all in your focal area. Uh, paint from light to dark, that's what I would say. So think about your lightness in that focal area and then paint the dark areas in and then kind of fill in those middle tones. Uh, the biggest thing I would say to bring your focal area to that brightest and most intriguing area is combining a lot of those different ideas that I've talked about and really putting them all together in one. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple artists here. Uh, this is Joseph Millard William Turner. He's one of my favorite artists who I think uses that focal area really well. Um, let's look at this one of his works. So if you look at this work, you can see that his focal area is going to be right here, the brightest of brights. And you're always, all these other things are leading to that focal area. Um, and kind of those middle tones and things like that. 
Um, here's a, a fun example too. So when you think about a 25% of a work of art, uh, you can see in that example in a little bit here of how he uses it. Here's another artist, uh, Caravaggio, and his work is just really unique to see the way he uses light to bring attention to that focal area. If you look at this hand and the way that this hand is just so uniquely constructed and that all the focus is right on that face right there. I'm always intrigued by Caravaggio's hands and he's one of the reasons why I think there's such an important aspect to an artist's skill set. Um, here's another good example. Let's use um, let's use this one. This one's really intriguing. So if you look at this image, where's the focal area? Right here and right here. And they're just so bright in contrast to everything else. And that brings your eye there. Now we're getting closer to being able to see this. In my work, I did this painting and the focal area is technically right in this area where that eye and the ear is. The ear is actually the, almost one of the brightest, if not the brightest area to kind of draw your eye right there and then it'll bring you back down and around and you'll have that passage like we talked about in your work. But I think the focal area of your work is going to be something that you kind of more and more as you grow as an artist, you continue to develop. And this work actually is one I've been working on more and more. I've been working on it forever, trying to figure it out. But the focal area eventually will be this, and I'll tone down the rest of them. So this is the absolute brightest and most intriguing area next to those really dark background colors that I'm starting to add in. So there's some examples in my work how I'm using focal area. And here's an example how William Turner, a English painter, has used it. Now he has this nice contrast where the most detailed and the darkest shape is next to this light shape right here and it brings your eye and attention to that focal area. Now he also does it really nicely over here where that sun is paired with that dark colors over here and it just brings your eye to these different areas and that texture of his paintings is just so amazing. So I hope this helped you uh, understand the idea of having a focal area and a focal point. Uh, I look forward to talking with you more very soon uh, about the ideas of our next key to painting.